Thank you. Yeah, this is one of those talks he just mentioned, how small it can be, it's small. <laughs> um, we have a lot of time, but I hope it will be a lot of interaction because I can answer a lot of questions probably about community or how, about how to contribute or uh, how to get features in or whatever we like to talk about. Um, I will give one example of how I got yeah, acquainted with, with HashiCorp and their uh, company and their tools. Um, over the actual of something we did here internally and indeed the test coding for uh, HashiCorp. Um, yeah, well, actually, I'm working for Super Phyllis, so I'm going for Super Phyllis. But then in the last year, it's almost the same thing. So a lot of my time is spent on uh, Archibald tools, mainly on Packer and Tegaphone. Um, uh, yeah, so that's my first account. We all knew Vagrant, uh, based on Ruby, of course. Uh, we all knew Packer, more or less. But we didn't do Terraform, at least I didn't know. Uh, a telemail from a colleague uh, sending, hey, there's an interesting project going on, let's have a look at it. And that was just about in the time that we were uh, building our own cloud internally, a machine cloud, based on cloud tech technology. Uh, that was launched uh, yeah, for a little while then, so people were slowly starting to yeah, have the need for tools to automate things. Uh, there was an API you could talk to, you can uh, spin up stuff, but if cloud monkey, then people started to make custom scripts around cloud monkey. Uh, custom scripts, custom solutions, we saw the need for something for orchestration. At that time we already had uh, a work going on with Cloudify, uh, in Python, uh, which was in the same space actually. Uh, so there was a little bit of pushback to dive into something new. So I didn't pick up on it immediately. Uh, I didn't know Go that time uh, as well. Um, I was just yeah, getting to know it and getting, uh, yeah, getting my feet on the ground. I'm missing my... I'm missing my comments here. Okay. Um. Okay. Well. Now it's going to be a real small talk because I don't have my, my reminders. <laughs> What to talk about? <laughs> Check if I can get those. In the meantime, if you have questions on how to get involved, uh, Sander is certainly a go-to guy. So if you know Go and want to contribute to Terraform. <coughs> Uh, but it was very heavily on the, on the CPUs. 
uh, heavily on the API. Uh, and we have more than only the virtual cloud stack firewall. We also have physical firewalls. We also have host-based firewalls. So how to manage all these different kinds of firewalls? Um, we would like one input, one single input, and from that input make uh, yeah, all those firewalls converge and have a desired state. So not only set this rule open and forget about it, but check if this rule is open and only this rule is open. Um, so when I started to talk about this early, I, I was thinking, hey, maybe Terraform can still be interesting here because it's open source, so we can plug in our own uh, uh, providers that are needed, or add providers to the, to the core base. Um, we needed to make sure that it was flexible, that it was future-proof, because now we have these firewalls, but maybe tomorrow we have a different brand or a different cloud, or maybe we want to go to AWS and manage firewalls there also. Um, so I was really getting uh, to think, okay, let's find this with Terraform. Let's, let's build a small layer on top of Terraform uh, and add in Terraform itself whatever that we need to make this work. Well, it turned out to be, as always, a little bit bigger project than uh, just a small internal project. Um, that was mainly because of that I don't know which of you are using Terraform. Oh, that's, that's, that's a reasonable amount. And, and, and how long? Did everybody see? Uh, Anybody see version 0 0.2, for example? Yeah, that's all less than much. Yes, okay. Um, in 0 0.2, the, the, the set was indexed based on the order it was determined in the file. So if you have three items in your set, then it will be 0 1 to 2. Or 0 1 to 2. Um, that's okay. But if you have a firewall and, and every, all the rules are put in one set, and you have 100 rules, and you delete one rule, that means that the index of all the rules will change, because if you delete rule 0, everything will shift up 1, and that means that the diff is totally, everything is changed, so we delete everything, we create everything. Um, so I went into that, and then I thought, okay, well, let's, let's fix it right away, let's, let's dive into Terraform, let's dive into Archicorp, I, I fixed contact with uh, Mitchell and with Alan, at the time the only two working on the project, as, as committers, at least. Um, uh, so we had a little chat about how to approach things and how to look at things and, and they were very helpful, as they still are. They, they're just less involved now as they have yeah, more to manage, more people to manage, more projects to manage. So, so you, I do notice lately that there are yeah, less and less people you talk to. There's more the, the committers and the, the, the people assigned to a project that are really helping the community instead of those. Um, but we, I dived into it and then it started out uh, that it was something, somewhere in the core how it does diffing. Uh, that was an issue there. Uh, so I changed a lot of the core code, but then I found that all the providers that already existed didn't use the, the new schema approach, which was the helper function to make new plugins very easy to write. So I started out before I could do the, the change on top to do all the other stuff to make it compatible with, with one and the same way of working so that when I change it, I have to change it once instead of have to check for every provider how to change it. Um, so by that time, of course, they noticed me doing all kinds of commits and they asked, so you're doing nice what are you doing? And, and um, a little bit later they asked, okay, do you want to be a goal committer so you can help us build this tool and get a good deal around it, which of course I, I was very uh, glad to do. Um, so in the end, this, this paid off. This, this took a while because I thought to build a small layer on top of Terraform and in the end I, I ended up with changing almost every provider that th at that time existed, including some of the core pieces. Uh, but by doing that, I learned a lot of what Terraform was and I learned a lot about how, how the approach and the, the way of thinking from Archicorp itself was with their tools. And of course, they, they all have all these building blocks that now are combined using Atlas, but they are all separate tools. And you can choose to use Atlas and, and by Atlas steer a couple of these tools from one point. But you can just as well build a layer on top yourself and use the same open source blocks that they use themselves internally as well. Um, so the result was very good. We were very happy with it. We, we use it here internally now. It's not open source, but maybe we will one day, I don't know. Um, Okay, I lost time, no, okay. Um, so then came along a slightly bigger project, that's what we were doing uh, the last time. 
And for that, we wanted to use Terraform as an external service, as an external API. Um, again, I had a lot of contact with, with both Mitchell and Amon, because that's not their vision. Their vision is that Terraform is a command line tool, uh, with text-based uh, files for your state. It can also be remote in HTTP or, or in S3, but that there are command line tools uh, that you use locally in your machine or in your management machine. So they said, well, maybe you better fork it and uh, create stuff in there. And if it's really used or, or wanted by the community, then you can always merge it back. So again, they help me out with, with how to approach it and, and what to do. Uh, but they hold off on getting it into the, the, the core of Terraform itself. Um, so we first started with an HTTP uh, JSON version of it. So you just said Terraform-API. Um, and then we started as a demon. Works very well because then you can just make an HTTP call and you don't have all the, the stuff on disk anymore. So that, that's really helpful for, uh, yeah, if you have multiple teams. Actually, what Atlas does a little bit, it's the same. It provides you a way of with multiple teams working on the same conflict with the same state without being afraid that you, that you overwrite someone else's work. Yes. Okay, just, just a small size that um, to show what I think that the, the building blocks that Dashboard delivers, you can use them as is, as they, they <coughs> um, their purpose is to have more online tools that you can share and can work with, and you can use like that, of course, but they, they, they give you a lot of extra uh, in, in terms of if you combine a few of those uh, components they deliver. The design, for example, uses Salt Console and Terraform beneath the surface. So you can easily do the same as they do with Atlas, although of course I will show in a second uh, with the design. Um, but just uh, looking at those tools and seeing what they can use for you and, and how you can automate even uh, the automation in that sense. So what we want to do is make things repeatable and share stuff um, by making sort of blueprints. And a blueprint, and that is, you, of course, you recognize these, if you know Terraform, because they are just resources. And, and uh, resources in, in this moment are still uh, agnostic, so they're not classic resources, or open stack resources, or AWS resources, they're generic. So it's a VPC. And, and uh, I can add servers in that, or not in a VPC, and then I have to do first big network. In a network, I got a server, so it's also smart enough to know what can be a root node and what not. Um, and in the end, when you've done this, you can go to a deployment. Um, so you can see that it's a Terraform plan, actually. It's a generic plan, and as soon as you make deployments from it. But any questions? Does it work? <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> it does good? Yes, it does work. It's not only thing because I was thinking to talk more about the components and the ability to. To engage with Hashicorp and to build tools around their components if you like to. And, and, and um, yeah, it's, it's difficult to know what then to tell about that, other than that they are helpful. They are open to almost everything. If you, if, you, if you can add your features in such a way that it doesn't break any existing stuff, they will almost always say, okay, let's get it in. It's only the API, that's why I uh, used the example. That was something they said, well, okay, that's, that's totally different than our vision with how we want to our roadmap. So then please do it in a, in a branch or in a, in a fork. But, it, but if it turns out that people want this, then you can always merge it back again. So, so they're really open for any kind of, yeah, I don't know, whatever. I, I didn't have, uh, uh, except for the API, I didn't have anything that it didn't merge. Even the things that for the API I implemented that isn't needed by Terraform itself, but that I need because I wanted to run it as a demon. So then you have uh, memory leaks that weren't shown as a as it goes all up because it starts up and a few minutes later it's stopped. So you will never manage, notice something is, is wrong or is leaking go routines of memory. But as soon as it runs 24 7, then sooner or later you will manage, or you will notice that things are cleaned up properly. Um, and also the ability to, to send in a JSON plan from an external resource without having it from a console and all the steps that normally take place. That wasn't possible, and that's, that's possible now, and they don't use it in Terraform, but now since it's added, you can use it externally. So, so they're really, uh, I think, an open and open problem. So if you have anything that you would like to add, you're more than welcome. Yes? If you have uh, existing plans, can you also import them and uh, edit them later on? In the design, you mean? Or? 
Ja, jo, 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 um, so if you make a call to the APL, you, you need the, the state as JSON and you need a plan as JSON. Um, if you write out a plan, then it will usually be a, a .tf file, so you will have the, 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 the ACL language. Um, I don't know if there's a tool to convert those to, to each other, I don't think there is. And you also need to keep in mind uh, that the ESI is, is, is cloud agnostic way of working so in, in the normally so uh, people who already work with our support uh, Terraform know that if you want to create a plan you have to specify uh, the provider to build your stack on and that's on a specific provider you're going to build that plan and in ESI it's agnostic so at the moment uh, it didn't work uh, but when you create a deployment then you choose which provider you want to use and that will fill in the specific cloud provider details necessary to deploy it. So you need to have a sort of transformation from the original configuration from the yeah, towards DSI. Yes, yeah, strictly you can tell from that that's one of the, the drawbacks if you can see it. Like if, if you are using multiple clouds or if you want to use multiple clouds to, to, to look what the cheapest is at a certain point in time for spinning up some workload. Um, then you, you, you do have to reconfigure stuff because the, 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 the entries that you can make in, in an AWS instance are different than for a cloud mm -hmm. or for the Google uh, instance or a cloud tech instance right now. Um, and by this small layer on top, we only convert it until we you say, okay, I want to do it in this cloud or this cloud, and we convert those values for the correct attributes. So we have one input, the same the same as for desired and file. We have one input and we convert it to the Need a Terraform config that you want at that time. Okay, Sandra, thanks for your, all your efforts on Terraform until now. Uh, looking for some inside info. The thing I like most about Terraform, the biggest surprise that I got when I started using it was um, the Bastion hosts. It was like when I saw there was a Bastion host, I think, hey, I needed that, and I didn't think yet that I needed it, but I need that. Um, any ideas when it's going to be available for Windows? It is. Really? Yes. Yeah. But that's only a few days. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's uh, actually one of uh, my uh, one of my commits that had as an agent for Windows. Yeah, that's not the same as Bastion. I understand. This, this yeah. is uh, a agent um, support for Windows, so you can have agent agent running with your keys in it. Yeah. So that will now work. That's something different, that's the best one, you're right. That's, uh, then you're talking for best one to win around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but that's a difficulty, win around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we looked at that, we discussed it earlier about possible solutions, but there's not something concrete on the table for that one. Yeah, the only thing I thought was hacking together some SSH tunnels or stuff. To <laughs> yeah, I, I know a lot of people using SSH actually uh, on Windows also. Mm -hmm. They have an SSH team listing on the Windows box and they use SSH as transport to provision on Windows boxes instead of, you know, um, yeah, it has to, it's not the nicest solution, but that, yeah, it's, it's at the moment, WinRAM makes it a little bit hard, you can proxy WinRAM traffic, that's possible, uh, but then it would almost always mean that you have something in place already, um, pre-configured, it's not as easy as that, so, yeah, no, I was in the, in the wrong corner. <laughs> okay, anyway, thanks for that. Right, well, we have uh, is it, yeah, we have time for one more question. Otherwise, uh, we're going to move on to the next talk. Yes, yes. All right. Thank you, Sander. Okay.